thousands of his votes. Uh, anybody who looks at a, a uh, independent uh, or third party candidate, whether it's a Green Party candidate or independent party candidate, and uses the words, are you taking away votes from the Democrats, in my view, is, uh, is basically saying that small party candidates uh, are uh, second class citizens. Either we have an equal right to run for elective office in our country, or uh, we are basically developing a two-tier system where the two dominant parties, with all their commercial support, uh, control the votes in this country. So either none of us are spoilers because we have an equal right to run, or all of us, because we're trying to take votes from another, one another, are spoilers. There's no stratification. When that word spoiler is used to uh, attach to a small party candidate, that to me is clear political bigotry, just as if uh, it was used against a class of voters years ago uh, during the uh, pre-civil rights era. So I think ballot access is a major civil liberties issue, and people in this country, whether they like it or not, must recognize how discriminatory that word is and must try uh, to adhere to what the polls tell us, that they really want more voices and choices, and that about 60 percent of the people of this country want a viable third party, even though they may not vote uh, for that party. So we have to get over it, and liberals especially have got to get over their easy abdication of least worse voting for the Democrats, where they don't put any pressure or they don't make any demands on the Democrats uh, because they fear that the Republicans are worse. That sets up a system where the corporations are pulling 24-7 the Democrats in their direction to become corporate Democrats, like the corporate Republicans, and no one is pulling the other way. Why? Because they're all uh, freaked out by the Republicans and they're going for least, vote, uh, least worse voting. All the bargaining power of progressives and liberals uh, atrophy with that attitude. So if they don't want to support a small party candidate, if they want, don't want to go to our website, naderexplore08.org, and see the reasons in that remarkable letter by my supporters that's on that website, uh, see the reasons why we are testing the waters, then they at least have to make demands on the Democratic Party, which they did not make in OO against Gore, and they did not make against Kerry. In fact, they uh, uh, had a moratorium on demonstrations against the war in 04. Ralph Nader, you a while ago said that if Hillary Clinton were the Democratic presidential nominee, uh, you would run for president against her. What is your assessment of Barack Obama? My assessment of Barack Obama is that he knows what the score is in terms of the male distribution of power. Uh, he knows what he has said in the past about the Israeli-Palestinian issue and the need for uh, Palestinian rights and a two-state solution. He knows that uh, this war was a criminal war in Iraq, and we've got to get out of it in a responsible, expeditious manner. Uh, he knows that corporations have too much power over workers and consumers and small taxpayers and elections and the government. But when you watch him, uh, he stays at a very high plane of generality and abstraction about change and we're one nation and we're one people. And that may uh, sing with uh, the, the, the desire of people to, uh, to feel like they're part uh, of a unity. But it doesn't do much for the uh, productivity of the political dialogue. He does not get specific enough. Therefore, I think his main problem is he's censoring himself. And that is not sufficiently rationalized by saying that's just a tactic to win the primaries and get elected. After a while, day after day, week after week, when you self-censor yourself, you become a different person, and it's a reflection on character. I also think that if he didn't self-censor himself, if he started uh, reverberating to the many mainstream press reports on corporate crime, fraud and abuse, against pensions, against workers, against small investors, on the labor laws that are obstructing workers from organizing, on the need to have a foreign policy that isn't militaristic, uh, on the need to have a, 
uh, an efficient military budget, where he said we, he, he wants to enlarge and modernize the military, which is already absorbing half of the federal government's operating expenditures, on the need to direct taxpayer money to the necessities of the American people and not to pour them into corporate subsidies, handouts, giveaways, bailouts, which we call corporate welfare, on the need to protect consumers, especially in the inner city, from the rapacious practices of lenders, et cetera. I think he would enormously advance the number of people who would support him. And he certainly think, has the intellect to do that. Do you think he uh, is, has different positions than Hillary Clinton? And what is your assessment of her? His declared positions almost fit the definition of protective imitation. They're too close to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is a corporate Democrat. There's no better evidence of that than the Fortune magazine cover story in June of last year, which basically said, business loves Hillary. Hillary 